Hello, you're on the radio with Delilah. Go ahead, caller. Uh, yeah, Delilah, I had a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do I play the game Magic the Gathering? It's not normally the kind of question Delilah gets, but you know what? Delilah delivers. Delilah, shut up. You're a radio DJ. Just do your job and answer my question. The game of Magic is a lot like a love relationship. It is? It's almost exactly the same. What? You take your cards, you build a deck that you feel close to in your heart. Have you ever felt close to someone in your heart, caller? I mean, like I feel close to the memory of Abraham Lincoln. I don't know what that means, but I'll accept it. I mean, like, I appreciate everything that he did. He was a great man. Exactly. Perhaps you need to build an Abraham Lincoln tribute EDH deck. Oh, thanks, Delilah. This has been neither informative nor (laughs) helpful. Good thing neither Megan or I are late night love talk show radio hosts. That's right, because radio DJs can go to stinking heck. <laughs> Instead, we decided to hold the pot, host a podcast, which is like a radio DJ job, except, except no music, no music, and also we the pay's probably you know, the same. Yeah, no, is it? No, no. DJs is make it? nothing. Nothing. Are you sure? Even the pro ones. <laughs> You mean like the Howard Stearns of this world? No, I just mean like the people who are doing it as a nine to five. Oh, a nine to five. No, you don't make any money. Wow. It's real bad. But I mean, maybe in a major market, you could probably be okay. How did Barb Abney do it? She had kids. I mean, you just make it work. Like how do teachers do it? I ask myself that oh, every day. That's a really good question. Both my parents were teachers and like It's <laughs> not enough no, money. It is not. Especially not for the job we're asking them to do. No, and they work so many hours. They and do. they like put everything into it. Anyway, we're getting off topic. This is a podcast about Magic the Gathering. Welcome. I'm one of your hosts, Megan. And I'm one of your hosts, Delilah. And this, oh, uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, she came back for a second. Delilah, get out of here. Sorry, my name is Maria. I, sometimes my soul, my body is inhabited by the soul of Delilah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, oh. It's okay. Are you sure? I mean, I give really wise advice. You heard it just now. You're going to make a Lincoln EDH deck, and it's going to be great. Okay, listener's question. If there's one card that embodies Abraham Lincoln... Great question. What is it? Uh, please tweet at us, at MTACast, with your answer on the subject. You could make a whole bunch of historical decks. Commander yes. decks. Uh, oh, yeah. You could make, like, um, the the American Civil War deck. Yeah. Uh, you could make the American Revolution deck. <laughs> you could make the... the um, French and Indian War deck. Mm-hmm. You could make uh, the. Um, I want a Tea Party theme deck. You can make like the Boston Tea Party, please. Yeah. Yeah, just making yeah. sure. These these. You could would make a uh, like a Spanish American War theme deck. Oh, I see what you thought I meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, Boston Tea Party. Yeah, you could do French. Did you say French Revolution already? No, I didn't. Because you could do that I with was like all the American ones. The vampire. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. The nobles. Oh, yeah, with, like, all of the aristocrats. Mm-hmm. There's so many aristocrats decks, so you could make a, like, France pre-revolution deck. Oh, we have such great France ideas. post-revolution deck. You could make a czarist Russia deck. You could make a <gasps> post-czarist Russia deck. You could make a height of communist Russia deck. You could make a post fall of the wall deck you oh man we're real i'm really just going i'm just really i was trying to think you could i was gonna say you could make like a 1960s era american cold war beginning the cold war deck but i'm not you make sure cold you war could deck. do you think you could you can what i bet you that that is one of the easiest decks to ma- make that we have named because it's just a control deck <laughs> yeah it's just a control deck and it's it's like blue okay it's just blue and cold it's icy. I hope we've inspired you on There's the a lot show. Of espionage. This isn't a segment, but you know. No, nope, but it's not. But you know. Here we are. We are. We're dreamers. What can we say? We are. Uh, so, but on today's show, we are going to talk about subjects and things. <laughs> That's so true. As pertain to the game Magic: The Gathering, because we are Magic: The Amateuring. That's true. We've got a uh, for the noobs for you uh, coming up in a little bit about activated abilities, which sometimes get tricky mm-hmm. if you're a newer player. That's right. Uh, we are also going to talk about a modern masters draft that we did this past yes, week, uh, as well as what happened at the GPS this weekend. Plus, an update from our modern lives as we kind of slide down the final hill into San Antonio. Yes. Team Uh, Unified Bonnard. Texas is, in fact, at the bottom of a giant (laughs) hill. 
<laughs> like the U.S., right? We're at the, the top in exactly. Minnesota, and it just goes down. And it just goes down. Uh, exactly. Good. It works the same way it looks like it would on a map. Where if you start at the top, if you start rolling in Minnesota, you'll, you'll just roll all the, all the way, way to down. Texas. Yeah, good because that's what I that's what I imagined with, with momentum exclusively. We're also gonna throw a pack into our Patreon giveaway of Modern Masters. That's right. We're gonna crack one of these suckers for Flavor Text Theater. Megan's got an update. She's gonna tell us about that. She wouldn't tell me what it that's was. Right. She just You're said put it in be the show. Exclusively disappointed. <laughs> We have some business to take care of. <laughs> yes, our first is a thank you to you, the patrons of this show who make what we do happen. Uh, if you are a patron, thank you so much. If you are not yet a patron, uh, check it out. See what it's all about at patreon.com slash mtacast. If you throw as little as a dollar an episode our way, um, it helps us get better equipment to record things on. It helps us put together different segments and different videos and different topics to talk about. I don't Your know voice why I lost my voice. Way. That was really weird. <laughs> it was weird. Okay, well, I came back. It was back. like it was gone for a Ooh, second. It was just like spooky. Like a ghost sucked it away for a ghost second. Ghost host? Was that you? Hey, we haven't heard from ghost host in a while. Ghost host, how's that hanging with you? Great question for ghost host. <laughs> <laughs> Always a joker, that uh, one. Oh, but I'm glad things are going well. Yeah. And I really hope yeah. that your kid gets into Cornell. Fingers crossed. It's a good school. So, <laughs> besides being an awesome supporter of the show, you also get rewards based on your uh, patron level. And we have new exciting yes. rewards coming for you just around the corner that we are uh, going to keep under our hats for a little bit. But just oh. keep in mind that if you're a patron when they drop, you will be... Uh, able to access them that's I'll right that way of course you get access to our discord channel if you're a patron and uh just the knowledge that you're helping us out as a member of the less than one percent club i would like to see a few more people join the family before the end of the month that month that would be make me really happy because we're actually down on this month number of patrons so yeah please join your family it, it, it means a lot to us uh we also want to thank cardkingdom.com slash mta cast the sponsor of the show who i was at their store um out in bellevue the mox boarding house it's amazing. Um, which is incredible. If you're ever out there, you can't go there and not go to the boarding house. It's great. There's games and rooms of games. There's and more games and rooms of more games. There's sweet, like, There's ciders. food. There's I just, just, drinks. just talking about alcohol. <laughs> But, like, every sleeve you could ever imagine, the service is, yeah. is ridiculous. I bought the rest of my modern deck while I was there. What? Yeah, it was really easy because I just, like, sat down on these computers and I was like, I know this, 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 this. And then they had it in their system. They're like, okay, I'll go get it for you. And then they, like, brought it to me on a silver platter. What? Was it literally on a silver platter? No, but that's how it felt, oh, Megan. damn it. That's how it felt. I feel duped. <laughs> the service was great. Oh, yeah. they gave us a t-shirt to give away on the show as oh, well. Oh, what? Yeah, so, surprise. <laughs> wow, you guys. Uh, but head over to cardkingdom.com slash mtacast for all of your magic needs. And youtube.com slash mtacast to see some of our sweet videos. More coming at your, at your face places soon. <laughs> So, Megan, uh, you've got to break my curiosity and tell me what your update is. Oh, okay. So, a couple of people have very surprisingly asked, although it's been two years since we last talked about this topic. What? What are our friends Nicolas Cage and Tommy Lee Jones up to, oh, everybody? Oh, my God. <laughs> Great question. I am here to tell you what has been happening in the lives of Tommy Lee Jones and oh, Nicolas Cage. Oh, goodness. Uh, since we were last year, Tommy Lee Jones, of course, was in an actual film, uh, the Jason Bourne movie that came out in 2016 as CIA director Robert Dewey. <clears throat> yeah, he really was. Wow. He really was. Uh, since then, in 2016, he was also in Mechanic Resurrection, which I assume is not a real film. Is that's like where a mechanic dies and then comes, <laughs> and back, to comes back to life to seek revenge on every car that ever bested him. Exactly. Shock and Awe and Villa Capri. Both of those are in, out in 2017. Okay. Uh, but, you know, like not much not much to say about them but yet. But overall, he's doing okay. He's still getting jobs. Yeah, exactly. He is obviously uh, still, still getting jobs. Okay, great. Um, for people who don't know, uh, we do regular updates. Well, they're not so we regular. Used to, they used we to used regular. to do regular updates on Tommy 
Lee Jones, Nicolas Cage. We've kind of let it lapse, so I'm really glad that you're bringing this to attention again. No problem. Uh, okay, are you ready for a list of every film Nicolas Cage is in in 2017? Yes. Inconceivable, Looking Glass, <laughs> Mom and Dad, The Humanity Bureau, Vengeance, A Love Story, Arsenal, Okay, I got to the end. Mom and Dad is the worst name for a (laughs) movie. Of a movie I've ever heard. I've ever heard. Although the Humanity Bureau is a very close second. (laughs) The Humanity Bureau very close second. It's a like post apocalyptic death panels movie put out by like the right wing. (laughs) Do you guys want to hear though a quote that I came across when I was looking at this? Yes. Because this is this is a quote from Nicolas Cage. It's I don't know how I've never heard this before. I remember when I met Johnny Depp. He was a guitar player from Florida, and he had no idea he could be an actor. I said, I really think you are an actor, that you have that ability. That was just from playing one game of Monopoly with him. What? (laughs) Oh, Nicolas Cage. (laughs) Classic. National treasure. Uh, IMDb appears to think that he plays flamboyant or eccentric characters. What? The untrue. <laughs> but I don't know what mis, you know, what misinformation they're laboring under with that. I old Nicholas Cage. I would classify as the greatest American like dramatic actor of our time. Have you ever seen Moonstruck? We've a hundred percent talked about this in the past. Yeah, but I have not. It's great. Oh, I really want to see it. We we should watch it because it has share in it. I know. Um, as Nicolas Cage, and it's Wait, really Cher, good. Wait, Cher as Nicolas Cage? Yeah. yeah, that's what I said, right? <laughs> Cher said. as Nicolas Cage. Amazing. I'm watching yes. it right now. Uh, Cher portrays a young Nicolas Cage. It's also been too long since I've seen Face Off, and let me just take a moment. Megan, you'll back me up on this, mm-hmm. that if you have never seen Face Off, go this very instant and watch, and watch it. it. It is great. It is incredible, or inconceivable, I think, as a... F- Future film of Nicolas Cage would say. Oh, here, okay, here's an article from 20, November 2016 okay. about him. Why is the headline, this is okay. the full headline, why is Nicolas Cage making oddball direct to digital movies? Otherwise, quote, I can be a little self destructive. <laughs> there you go. I mean, we all need an outlet, right? Mm hmm. Nicolas Cage has three movies hitting theaters in the next two weeks. Yeah. Really? That was in October? That was in November. November? Yeah. I did not hear about any of them. The worst thing one can be with filmmaking is boring, Cage told the Los Angeles Times. I mean, he has a point. The whole point of movies is they've got to move. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Well, deep. That's deep. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd be stillies and nobody would go see that. Well, that's just a photography exhibit, and I've been to one of those. <laughs> just kidding. People would probably go see it. Yeah. Ansel Adams is a real person. <laughs> is that your update? Qu- quote for MTA cast, Ansel Adams is a real person. <laughs> well done. Well played. <laughs> that is my update. Thank okay. you, everyone. <laughs> We're about to do a For the Noob segment here, but before we do, I want to point out something Megan just said, what? which was, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> let me drink my cherry Coke with a straw here like a serial killer. I just feel very menacing. <laughs> it's It does look really menacing. Like, it's the little things that are off, you know? Yeah, it's the tiny things like putting a straw in your Coke can. Mm-hmm. I mean, already you're a monster who's polluting the planet. You're just <laughs> going the extra mile. Brutal. <laughs> That's how I feel about myself every time I use something disposable. I do not drink a lot of soda for that reason. I basically feel like a demon. I feel like you're too hard on yourself sometimes. You know, I don't know what to say. (laughs) Okay, anyway. You might be right. (laughs) We'll take our therapy show with Delilah off the air for now and go back to For the Noobs, which we're going to talk about Activated and mana abilities because we had a question mm-hmm. through our Patreon only wink yes. wink nod nod Discord channel. Here uh, is the question. All right. They wanted to know activated abilities. When are they instant speed? When are they sorcery? Activated abilities are a good thing to discuss. I was playing magic for over a year before I realized that you could use an activated ability on a creature the turn you played it, unless you have to tap it, of course. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so the answer is to the to the first part of the question, which I think is like the what, like the win. Yes. Uh, part of it is you can 
activate it at instant speed unless it says only at sorcery speed. Correct. Which is a thing that some of it says. Like some of the implements that are out right now is a, are a great example. Um, the implement of Malice, for instance, which is uh, the one where you pay a black and it makes them discard a card. Uh, is a great example of it only it's it says in the text you can only do this at sorcery speed yeah um, and that's so that you cannot for instance if they're drawing off the top of their deck you, they can't draw a card and in their upkeep you make them discard it because that's messed up and mean yeah uh, discard it at instant speed is like something so that, that that the wizards isn't really pushing sometimes in modern someone colligans commands you at yeah. instant speed and you're yeah. like you you monster. You. You probably put a straw in your Coke. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you probably do. <laughs> um, so like at its base level, an yes. activated ability, how do you know if it's an activated ability? Uh, so you know it's an activated ability if it has a cost and then a colon and then it tells you what that what that cost does. The colon. It's important not only in digestion and to make sure you're a living human being, but also it denotes an activated ability on a magic card. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for instance, it can be something as simple as Lanoir Elves uh, says, tap, colon, add green to your mana pool. Which, you know, obviously we don't ever, you know, and usually in Magic when you're sitting at the table and playing, you don't say, all right, I'm going to activate this activated ability of my Lanoir Elves and I'm going to <laughs> tap it to add green mana. You just tap it to add green mana. Right. Um, it can also be more complicated, like uh, I was saying one of my favorite ones of all time, Scholar of Athreos, uh, back from the Theros block, uh, has, it's a creature, it's a 1-4 for 2 and a white, and it has 2 and a black, each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Gain and drain! So as the person asking the question yes. was saying, you can't use Lanowar Elves the turn it comes into play because it doesn't have haste. It's summoning six, so it can't tap to do its abilities. But Scholar of Athreos, if you played this on turn six and you didn't have anything else to do with that other three mana, you can go ahead and activate it right away. Yeah, on your turn, on your opponent's turn. Yep. In response to it being killed, for instance, if you wanted to get in that last, you know, point of damage and gain life gain for yourself. Yep. Activated abilities are really flexible, and um, mm -hmm. that's why they're so great, because you can basically use them almost at any point during the game. Um, you can leave up mana to use them, and, and it, say you don't activate it, you can cast an instant spell or something like that. So, yep, they're really cool. Um, and so something like Scholar of Athreos, you can also use it multiple times. So say you cast it when you had six and you paid some, and then the next turn comes around, you only draw a land, you play out that land, and then on your opponent's turn, or you know, whenever you feel like using that mana, you can activate it twice if you want to. Right. And some cards do have activated abilities that say, hey, only once each turn. Um, if it's something, you know, super powerful, um, or, you know, it, otherwise they saw a fit to limit it to once per turn. So a question that we had since we've been talking a lot about modern on the show is, is a fetch land an activated ability? For instance, windswept teeth, it is a land, tap, comma, pay one life, sacrifice windswept teeth, colon, search your library for a forest or plains card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So, yes, it is. It is. Um, and that is why sometimes um, if, I, I noticed this like in lantern control, sometimes if you're opponent wasn't playing a deck that you thought that they would have anything to name with Pithing Needle, but you need to get all of your cards out of your hand because you want your ensnaring bridge to like stop everything. Mm. Sometimes you'll play out a Pithing Needle, and if they have a land that they haven't cracked yet, you can name that land, and they can crack it, obviously, while the Pithing Needle is on the stack. Um, they don't know what you've named yet. Like, you cast it, and they have to do it then, uh, which is very important oh, to Oh, really? Know. Yeah. So it says it, like, it says as it enters the battlefield, name a card. So if they want to crack their fetch land, they have to do that while it's on the stack. You haven't named anything yet. And then once it hits the battlefield, you say, okay, this is the card. And at that point, then it's, it's in play. Done. They can't do it. Oh, that's so interesting. That's counter to what I would imagine that how it worked. Okay. No, it has to, yeah. So it has to happen when it's when it's on the stack. Otherwise, they can't crack it anymore. Okay. Um, also, uh, so... Obviously, activated abilities are something that go on the stack. 
Uh, so they can be responded to everything from a fetch land going on the stack uh, to a land noir elves to that scholar of Athreos or any of those kinds of things. So it is on the stack. So people can say in response, like bolt your creature or they can, you know, do anything else that they would be able to do at instant speed. Maybe use activated abilities of their own. But yours is still going to resolve because it's already on the stack. Yep, exactly. Even if they killed that scholar of Athreos, you'd still get the, the gain and drain. Uh, you'd still get the green mana from land noir elves. Um, they also, sorry, one more thing. Go ahead. Uh, they cannot, say you cracked Windswept Heath, um, sacrificing the land is part of the cost. So they can't, for instance, if they had somehow mm-hmm. instant speed land destruction, which I guess happens with like Ghost Quarter or something like that. They could not, you, you wouldn't want a Ghost Quarter of fetch land anyways. It does <laughs> no. literally the exact same thing. <laughs> but anyways, um, if for some reason they had instant speed destruction and they wanted to destroy that land, they could not do it in response to this. Right. Because it is already sacrificed. It's part of paying the cost. It comes before the colon. Yeah. So not only are you paying money for your thing to happen, but you're also donating your old car before you get your new one. It's just part of the cost of buying that new car. Exactly. So Megan brought up an interesting point, which was when I was pulling out cards from my Boggles deck to talk about this, uh, Griff's Boon is a great example of a card with an activated ability, mm-hmm. but it's a little weird um, because this also has the caveat of activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Mm-hmm. Three and a white, return Griff's Boon from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to target creature. So it can only be activated if it's sitting in the graveyard, which is a little yeah. weird. But uh, another card in the deck which is pretty famous, is Core Spirit Dancer, mm-hmm. which is one in a white for an O2. Uh, she gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to her. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. Yep, uh, and I had you pull this out just to note that it's obviously, it's different. So something like that is not an activated ability. There's not a cost. There's not a colon. It's a triggered ability. It says when you cast that aura, Boop. this happens. Yeah. Um, and again, it goes on the stack. If, say, they bolted your spirit dancer in response to you casting an aura. Which they probably will. Let's yeah. get real. Uh, you can st- you still get to draw that card. Yep. So, it's yeah. Pretty sweet. Uh, so, there you go. That's the, that's the quick and, you know, s- swift. Those are <laughs> two words that mean the same thing. That's the quick and swift version of... Activated well, abilities. Activated abilities. Now you're a little less noob than you were before. (laughs) Modern Masters, Modern Masters, Modern Masters draft! I was so excited I almost unplugged my headphones, Megan. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty exciting. It's a pretty great draft format. It is so great. I played two drafts. Megan played one draft because she was sick. Yes. Otherwise, it would have been more. That is very true. I would have drafted so much over the weekend, but (laughs) I was... At home, unable to get up. Yeah, it was bad. But um, I drafted in your stead, and I did not draft the deck you would have approved of. Then how was it in my stead, Maria? But <laughs> how was it in my stead? I did draft a sweet deck nonetheless. Yeah. Guess what? What? Headline of this format. Okay. If you want to play it, you can play it. <sighs> What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that fi- I don't know. Five color craziness, oh, freaking yeah. play it. You want to play two color solid deck? Yeah, sure, go for it. You want to play three color, four color? Guess what? You can, and it's not even bad. It's not even there's. It is, some would say, encouraged yeah. by the existence of three color cards in the set. Yep. Uh, it was. I just. It was very deep. Mm-hmm. You could go any direction you wanted. Multiple people could be in the same colors, even next to each other, there and it's, so it was fine. Fixing. There are gates. There are the there are the bant there are, not bantlands. I just love bant uh, but, colors. Uh, but there are what were they called? Um, Savage lands. Savage lands. Yeah. Uh, there are, you know, uh, clues clue stones. No, signets. no, no. Signets. The better the better clue stone, the signet. So I played a three-color deck and a four-color deck. Yeah. And I was quite proud of myself because um, I'm not really used to doing that kind of thing. So yeah. um, it Get was... Get crazy with it. And let me say what else I'm proud of. I played a Grixis deck and Ooh. I played a Jund deck. That's right. You. I got the names right. You're so fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. You know who came to me in both drafts? Who? By her benevolent... Wings. She, she is anything but benevolent. <laughs> Olivia Voldaren appeared Ooh. to me in her non-foil and foil far- forms in both decks, and I took it as a sign. Yeah. 
Turns out it's a great sign. I always put her in a deck. She's great. Can't lose. Yeah. She's insane. I mean, you can lose, but her, that card is nuts. Yeah. Just nuts. And mm-hmm. I, I never played with it before. Um, but what a fantastic time I had drafting and playing these decks. Awesome. Um, I, I also had a great time, even though I was still, in retrospect, slightly out of it. Yeah. yeah. Which I realize now. I was like looking at packs and I was like, I don't get half these cards. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> Good for you. You soldiered on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I, I also had a delightful time um, drafting and ended up, like, I feel like my issue was that I ended up two color um, and I could have been three color, like either like splashing in one of two different directions. And I wish that I had. Were you green white? Just, yeah. To just Plus. be bold and adventurous and carefree. That's and a play thing. as many colors as I wanted to. I first, second and third picked Signets. And once you've yeah. done that, like, you're well on your way to feeling okay. Yeah, I had four guild gates and two signets. So Do you know like, how many guild gates I had in my deck? How many? The l- last night? I'm not even kidding you. I think it was ten. That's insane. <laughs> and a <laughs> fetch land, which was relevant. That's an insane number of guild gates. I put in, I had, I like, somebody passed me Ogre Jailbreaker, which is a 4-4 four, for four, 4 that can only attack if you control a gate. And I was like, normally you just pass by that card. But I was like, we're, no, wait a second. Yes. <laughs> it's a 4-4 four, four for 4 in my deck. Get in. Yeah. I might be exaggerating, but if I am, it's only by, like, one or two. It was an insane. Impressive. I had very few basic lands in my deck. Because I also had those signets. So why even bother? Anyway, I'm just getting really Throw excited. Throw caution to the wind. <sighs> Uh, Maria, we also saw several Dinrova horror decks. Yes, we this did. really the only oh. way they can be described. Wow, were they Multiple great. Multiple blue-black uh, focused decks, which is pretty sweet. We saw so much bouncing and flickering of Dinrova horrors. Wow. Did we ever? I saw so much bouncing and flickering in general. Do you know how many times I got just owned by a ghostly flicker bringing back golem makers? A hundred times. A million times. Yeah, so the blue-white deck has uh, come out as an early favorite in Modern Masters draft. Quite good. And Seems to be quite good. can confirm that deck is really strong. And of course, you can you know play Esper and throw black in there for your Dinrova mm-hmm. horrors. No problem whatsoever. You can have every. You can have the best of every world. You know, somebody played Dinrova horror against me. Bounce yeah. something. Um, then played Cackling Counterpart to copy Dinrova Horror and bounce something else of mine again. Oof. And then I played my own Dinrova Horror and bounced their copy of Dinrova Horror. <laughs> and then, what did they do next? They did something that, where they, they bounced their Dinrova Horror again to bounce mine again. Anyway, it was very, it was like Dinrova cage yeah. match. Yeah. Dinrova cage match. Ghostly flicker. Dinrova cage match. Momentary blink. Is that the white one? I can't remember, but uh, that deck. I mean, I had Olivia, right? That card's a powerhouse. Even if I put her down on turn three with my signet. Yeah. It didn't matter because she just kept getting bounced. Yeah, that's true. If she Ravens, gets bounced, what are you going to do? You know, I think I was being a little greedy with her. Ba 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 ba. Because I wanted to take those Mist Ravens and keep them for my own, in my own weird little vampire bird sanctuary. But uh, the problem was that I should have just pinged those Ravens to death because they were just going to get ghostly flickered and yeah. like played back and bounced my Olivia back and then they go back to their owner's control. So I would think I was a little greedy. I was thinking about that as I was going to bed. I was like, Maria, you were just too greedy with that Olivia. You wanted your blood and you wanted to eat it too. Coming to the BBC this fall, Vampire Bird <laughs> Sanctuary. <laughs> I'd watch that. Yeah. Is it like the birds, except even scarier? Yeah, basically. The birds wasn't that scary, though. What? It's tense. It is very tense. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe you've seen it. What? You're shocking me right now. Yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm a big Alfred Hitchcock buff. I've seen, uh, let's see. Oh, have you seen Lifeboat? One of the weirder ones. No, I haven't, actually. Lifeboat is very bizarre. And honestly, one of the more unsettling ones. I'm in. I love Alfred Hitchcock. Okay, it's based on, Lifeboat is based on a What's-His-Face novel. That, you know, that guy. Yeah. Come on. What's-His-Face. The guy. (laughs) Grapes of Wrath, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, Grapes of Wrath, man. No, what's his name? Yep. John Steinbeck. Is that? Am I thinking of the right John? <laughs> John Waters. Man, okay, I'm gonna have to look this up. You keep talking about John magic as though McCain. Yeah, John. you know John McCain's famous short stories. <laughs> so 
yeah, I, I love the people who responded to my deck picture of my lovely Grixis build that had three of the Grixis, three, two makes you discard when you get hit by it. Yeah, that card's pretty good. But everyone was like, what are those three Mog flunkies doing? Oh, <laughs> the yeah, that was a John Steinbeck novella. Oh, was it? Right, okay. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Those shouldn't be there. But the rest of the deck is a masterpiece. Here's the tragedy, though. North by Northwest. It's one oh, of my favorites. Great. Oh, it's but so Megan, good. Have you seen Rope? Have I seen Rope? Which one's that one? That one's that is very tense. The whole way where two college students kill a guy and keep him in a chest through an entire party. His body. I don't think I've seen that one. No. Oh, it's so good. And they film it all in basically one take. It's not really one take because they have to change camera reels. But <sighs> maybe I have seen that one. It's because it plays with like it's like a plague. Because I think it was. Um. Because I feel like. Let me. I'm gonna look at a still of it because if it's we, the room that I'm thinking of. We live in a great city and we have a great theater in my neighborhood where you can go and see uh, like oh, Hitchcock movies great. sometimes. And I saw great. Rear Window there the other year. Oh, fantastic! Just fantastic. Rear Window. Oh my God. Oh yeah, I totally have seen it. I want to watch it again. Yeah. Like talk about like not having to do anything and still making you creeped out the whole time. Oh, sick. We've got a lot of good movie yeah. recommendations on this week's show. All right. Anyways, you guys. Anyway, what was I saying? I oh don't yeah. I remember you had some. This was the Grixis. tragedy. <laughs> my Grixis tragedy, which was I was past second pick pack one. Um, you know. A uh, hat. Hat. Second pick pack one. Hat. Nickel Bolas's. Ten hat. Nickel Bolas's. I was being his horns. Nickel Bolas's like blue, 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 black, black, red, red. Sack a creature, gain five life. You get a cruel cre- ultimatum. Yes, cruel ultimatum. And I was like, oh man, should I take this? No, Maria, you're too scared. Don't take it. I should have taken it. Yeah. yeah and should've. they're like, where was your cruel ultimatum? And I just had to sit there and think, I saw it. I did see it. Yeah. And I let it go. Shame on you. You know? Big shame. <sighs> Big shame. <laughs> if you want to see my newest play <laughs> premiering at... Big uh, shame? Yeah. Nicholas Local Cage theater. would be in that. Yeah, he would. <laughs> Nicholas Cage's newest film, Big, Big shame. shame. I'm definitely seeing Mom and Dad. Just kidding. Big Shame in Little Canada. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you did anything sweet with Modern Masters or continue to draft or play something sweet and sealed, tweet at us at MTACast. I want to see your sweet builds um, so we know what we're up against mm-hmm. um, out there in the world and what's what's hot and what's not. It's going to join Magic Online pretty soon, so we'll probably be streaming that and playing a whole load of it. Um, Modern Masters, man. Can't get enough of Modern Masters whenever they come out. Make sure you're following our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash sloth. <laughs> sloth. Sloth Magic the Amateur. Sloth Magic the Amateur. <laughs> twitch.tv sloth Magic the Amateur. <laughs> if only. Wait, do you think you can get dot sloth? I'm sure. No, you can't. Of course you can't. It's what? You went through that. You remember when we went through that really long <laughs> set of... Like, dot whatever you could get. Yeah. There were a lot of weird ones on there. Dot sloth. <laughs> dot sloth. Ah. <laughs> GP weekend. Hey, let's talk about some GPs real quick. Okay. So uh, there was a couple of standard GPs. One was in, uh, where was this? Porto Alegre. Yeah. And uh, the winner was a teamer deck. That's right. With uh, piloted by Victor Fernando Silva, uh, playing Teamer Tower. Maria, give what? us a give us a sweet look at that sweet 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 t- Teamer, teamer Tower action. Okay, so Teamer Tower. We've seen iterations of this deck before. It's running four copies of Dynavolt Tower, which yeah, you use to just ping 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 shoot 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 zap 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 zap. Uh, a lot of things going on. The only creature it runs is Torrential Gear Hulk because four of them. Because that card is sick. What, what do you need when you've got four Torrential Gear Hulks? Gear Hulks. <laughs> <laughs> the G is soft. I'm a I'm a Gear Hulk. <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. You're playing White Weenie. Uh, fuck. <laughs> 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 Bug. <laughs> two incendiary flow for a tune with ether because everybody's playing that car these days and then just a whole bunch of ways to trigger your dinofold tower including like so many instants a million this instants this is the deck for you if you never want to play magic on your turn you only want to play magic on your opponent's turn sounds like something you want to do Megan it is always something I want to glimmer do glimmer of genius harness lightning anticipate negate natural obsolescence void shatter disallow horribly awry cold flex return what, what a nightmare 
What a dream. <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool to see another deck besides Mardu vehicles or copycat take down a GP. Um, so it was neat to see this teamer deck um, manage to get all the way to the top. And it seems like, I mean, like I'm being a little facetious. It actually seems like a pretty cool deck. Yeah, it seems really awesome. I mean, I love anything that has a control shell. And this certainly does with so few creatures in it. Um, but yeah, you know, I would... I'd play this. Would you play this over copycat? Oh man, yes. Whoa. Yes, I would. Just to, just you know, I get it. I get the copycat. It's a great deck. And if you're playing it, like you get to do that, man. Like you do you. Uh, but it's not for me. There was an interesting story of the other GPL of the weekend, GP Shizuoka. Shizuoka. Shizuoka, with um. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna butcher this. Real hey, Kirino. The, yeah. Okay. The cool part about Sorry. this is that he took Owen Turtonwald's Mardu Ballista deck. Yes. It was his first Grand Prix ever. What? And he decided to win it. Wow. That is impressive as all get out, man. So, like, <laughs> if you're ever like, oh, this is my first GP, guess what? Guess what? You, you could, could win, win it? that sucker. <laughs> Like, you could just be like, all right. That's so cool. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and win this. I mean, that's the dream, right? That's the dream. You just sit down. Like, at some point after day one, you've got to be like, is this how it always goes? (laughs) Do you always just win a GP? Yeah. Uh, There was also a... um, There was also a Teamer Tower deck in in the top eight. uh, At Shizuoka. Uh, And, you know, there were a lot of Mardu decks. What are you going to do? Crowded freeway. But there were, there were, uh, there was a Jund deck as well, uh, which had, you know, look, it has Skyboat. I like how it's called Jund Smasher. Yeah. Get real inventive. What is it smashing? Oh, reality smash. It has three reality smashers in it. What? That's been a long time since I've heard of that card. Wow. And what a card. I mean, like, that's a, that's a bonkers card. It really is. Four and a colorless for uh, four and a wingdings. Yeah. For a five, five trample haste that if it's the target of a spell, they have to discard a card or else it's countered. Cool. I mean, like, that's super, that's super interesting. That's really cool. Yeah, that, that really smash really does smash it. I'm I mean, happy it's that it's a heck back. of a card. It is. We hated it when it was part of Ildrazi Winter. Oh, uh, what were you going to do? But um, it's cool to see it in this different yeah. build. So yeah, that was the GP uh, weekend update. Coming up this weekend, we're going to see some limited action. Ooh, that's right. Coming from GP Orlando, Florida, uh, you're going to get to see some sick Ether Revolt sealed, and then some sick Ether Revolt draft. I'm so excited. I love limited GPs, and uh, I just bounce out of my seat whenever I get the chance to pull one up on twitch.tv slash magic, put in the pizza rolls. We're not sponsored by Totino's. Totino's call us. And, uh, you know, crack an energy drink. One can, one can only dream. <laughs> and just watch some magic literally all weekend Ugh. while doing my taxes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no. <laughs> I'm doing real. your taxes. You know, I'll help you. I know. <laughs> But no, I'm legit. I'm legitimately excited because it's been a long time since I feel like when was the last limited GP I watched? I can't remember. But um, yeah, and there's gonna be a lot of people there to root for. We know several people going and playing, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. We won't be there, but we'll no. be there in spirit. That's right, and we'll be there in physical in San Antonio. <laughs> Modern update. So we've had an update every week. That's right. So far, before uh, GP San Antonio. We're just going to give you a real quick one. Here's the sound of my boggles deck right the there. The swift and quick. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> I play the deck. Yeah. So, so that's, Maria, how's it going? I've got all the cards here. Whoa. Thank you, Car Kingdom. <gasps> and um, a full modern deck. It's, a full, it's my very first full modern deck. And a lot of people ask me, like, are you playing Boggles for real? Is that a really, really playing? Because they're, it, it's kind of seen as a beginner's deck. Um, but the thing is, I legitimately love playing this deck. It's very mm-hmm. silly, very fun. It can win out of nowhere. And it has a lot of interesting tools and interactions that a lot of people kind of don't give it credit for. Um and I have it put together. So this is like just a really proud moment for me to have this full deck finally completed and just in my possession. And I'm going to keep it completed forever. 
Um, and I five would a modern league with it, competitive modern league on Magic Online, which I was very proud of as well. Yeah. And I've got these sweet, sweet Path to Exiles. They're um, beautiful. Which are just gorgeous by Rebe- Rebecca Gay. So Amazing. Check that Incredible. out. Incredible. Yeah. So, Megan, um, how's it going with you? You know, I still have not decided if I'm mono blue oh. or blue red. Oh, turns. okay. Turns. So, you're for sure turns. Oh, you guys, it started off as a joke. <laughs> As so many serious relationships do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. When you think, you know what, this this is a laugh, and then it turns out that it's true love. Yeah. Um, and but you, it's like, <laughs> but it's like that story, except it was a, a pair of siblings, and you couldn't decide which one you wanted to date. Been there. So you were just dating both of them for a while. <laughs> <laughs> But they were cool with it, and you're like, I'm just figuring this out. But you know that you're going to be in love with one of them, and you're in love with the theory of both of them. I get it. This is becoming a really extended and honestly kind of messed up metaphor. Look, it was fine in Jane Austen time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so my point is, I I love turns. It's great. Even though it started off as being like, <laughs> I'll play turns. Isn't that hilarious? And now you're like, and now I'm like, this is amazing. I want nothing else than to take everybody's turns all the time. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be mono blue or blue red yet because I cannot decide which one is better. What? Is the, the reason to add red. Um, so you get four lightning bolt in the main, which is like fine, whatever. Um, but then in the sideboard, uh, you get access to pyroclasm, which is pretty good, and crumble to dust, which is one of the very few ways that you could possibly win a Tron matchup. Yeah. Like very few ways that you could possibly win it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. A turns player beat me the other day playing Boggles. Yeah. Especially if they cast pyroclasm. That seems pyroclasm. like a good, yeah. a good matchup for... It is turns it is i think because i'm just not i'm fast but i'm not quite that fast yeah and like once you get to like turn four you can tap everything down anyways because because cryptic command doesn't target doesn't target anything Mm -mm. this is a fun story from when i was at um mox boarding house somebody said to me what deck are you bringing to gp san antonio and i was like oh you're gonna hate me it's the most hated deck in modern and he looks at me and goes oh you're playing taking turns huh (laughs) (laughs) I was like, uh, no, but uh, no. all right, I'm playing the second I'm most hated deck. And my, my <laughs> partner is playing the most hated deck in modern. All right. So, yeah. All right. Hopefully, Athena will join us on uh, playing, playing something, something that people equally trolly. are only made miserable by. Yeah. Perfect. Flavor Text Theater presents Movie Pitches Modern Masters Edition. That's right. It's our favorite Flavor Text Theater that we do. I think we're down to like, we, we do it like it's the first one of each new set. Yeah. The very first one. So this is our first Modern Masters. So we're going to go ahead and throw it out with our favorite game, Movie Pitches. All of these cards being added, of course, to our pool for a patron who's been a patron from for any amount of time. Could be somebody new. Could be somebody who's been a supporter for a long time. Uh, if this has a foil goif, guess what? It's yours. It's yours. Anything in here is yours. Yep. So uh, get over to patreon.com slash mtacast if you want a chance at entering. Yoink. <laughs> um, okay. So <laughs> this is, is this? a movie. Um, this is actually, it's it's about um, a guy who grew up, or not like, it like grew up at this point, essentially, um, watching all of the Tolkien film adaptations. Yeah. Was like super into it. Um, and he, he, uh, you know, he read all of the books and then he watched all the movies growing up. So, and he's like early twenties. We'll say he's like 24, 25 and he's in it like a boring office job. And he's like, what am I doing with my life? Um, and then he, uh, he, he uh, one day runs into someone. He's like having a terrible day and he's like such a grouch. And he runs into a woman. He's like super mean to her. It's like at the coffee shop and they, he like bumps into her and then he's like super mean. I and smell he a realizes rom-com. That she's like crying and he feels terrible. And she's like, it's fine. Like I was in the travel, like the, um, what's the, what's the, like, like people who book other people's vacations, travel agents. Yeah. She's like, I was a travel agent, but like it's, it's going under because there's not a demand for it anymore. And she's like sobbing. He's like, it's fine. You'll like get a new job. It's okay. And she's like, yeah, but you know, like I, I never got to go on like any of my own vacations and now I lost all of my savings. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it turns out that they both love Tolkien. So they both take a trip to <sighs> New Zealand uh, and see all of the places where it was shot. It's called Explore. You know what? That is a movie that people would watch. <laughs> it 
this. It's nerd movie like fantasy. Yep. Yep. That's a real film. Okay. okay. This one's a little weirder. I'm going to say it's an animated feature like Pixar or something. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a it's in a, in a universe where there are human beings and animals and everything. But also there are people or beings that are created from the, the elements. So there's like wind people. There's water people. There's earth people and there's fire people. And uh, the earth people are called the muds because they're made out of mud. And okay. they're kind of looked down upon in society um, <laughs> and don't really don't really like uh, get to accomplish much because they're kind of uh, put down. So the Olympics are coming up and <laughs> the element people are like, yeah. hold on. We want to submit, a t- you know, a team of all of the element people to the Olympic Games. Um, but, you know, it's outlawed. Well, they get it passed and they're and they're going to the Olympic Games. And at some point, the person carrying the torch uh, is a human and they like fall into a crevasse and die. And they're and they this they, <laughs> is getting brutal. Uh, the person carrying the torch just falls into a crevasse. <laughs> All right. And I'm with you. a mud person has to pick it up and carry it the rest of the way to light the Olympic flame. <laughs> it's called called Mud Button Torch Runner. <laughs> So Mud Button is his nickname. Yep, yep. Mud Button Torch Runner. That, that is an A-plus film. <laughs> I am very, very into it. Okay, um, so this is this is lightly based on... So there's this comic that I read when I was a kid as a book. It was like a full book. It was called Archie and Mahidabel. Okay. Um, anyways, so there's this one um, vignette where they go to a graveyard, and Mahidabel is a cat. Um, anyways, and they're like... And Archie is, what is Archie? Is he a bug or a ghost? <laughs> One of the two. I don't remember. It's been a long time, but I read it a ton as a kid. Anyways, they go to this graveyard in the middle of the night, and there's all of these ghosts there, and they're like, we're, because we were buried here, like we're trapped, like our ghosts are trapped in this graveyard. Um, so it's it's, ba- it's like that same idea, yeah. where there's this guy, and he realizes, um, we'll say he was, like, you know, sure, as like a typical superhero awakening, He was, but he's not really a superhero, but he was like struck by lightning or something. Um, and he realizes, uh, he walks by a graveyard one time after this event happens, and he realizes he can see and talk to ghosts Sweet. that are stuck in these graveyards except these ghosts are stuck in graveyards because they have unfinished business oh. and, but they can't do it because they're chained to like where their body is buried so they're like it sucks like I can't you know I can't like go on to the next realm because I have unfinished business but I can't do the business because I'm stuck here in this graveyard so he has to do it for and them yes and so he's like yes. basically like the ghost errand guy I love and it and he's like I will go take care of your unfinished business to help you print it um, um, it's called Lingering Souls. Yes. Yes. I'm in. That's actually like a series. I feel like that's a TV series. Yeah, that actually is probably a full, full. Uh, Mine is a horror movie uh, set in the 1980s at a blockbuster. Um, what happens is there's several movies in the blockbuster that are cursed. And when you rent them. I think that this is just real life. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely real. Uh, <laughs> when you rent them, if one of the cursed movies, you do not rewind it, um, what will happen to you is they're always horror movies. You will yeah. be murdered in the way that the people were murdered in the horror movie. Um, so it's basically like a PSA that Blockbuster sponsored. It's called Rewind. <laughs> yep, yep. It's not Be Kind Rewind. It's just like no, rewind, rewind or else. Or you're going to die. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, this one is a movie about a lot of <laughs> a lot of sheep who are yeah. just like classic, you know, wool sheep for uh, that, you know, they get sheared and then it gets spun into wool. <laughs> yeah. It gets spun into thread, I mean, into yarn. Um, but these, these sheep, the day before they get sheared, they all drop a bunch of LSD. <laughs> And it gets into their wool. Yeah. And so it makes, like, basically, like, LSD wool. So then when you touch it, it's like taking LSD. It's called delirium skeins. <laughs> that was definitely made in the 70s and someone's like, yeah. I have the best idea for a movie. Listen, a bunch of sheep drop, <laughs> drop acid. <laughs> This is another kids movie, and it's about a bunch of kids who their parents are kind of, you know, not there a lot, and they have to make their own fun. So what they do is they decide, they've heard legends, this probably takes place in Norway or something, Mm -hmm. that there's a bunch of 
you know, large, creepy people who live in the forest. But they've heard that if you go and put out um, a peanut butter and banana sandwich, they will come and they will uh, eat it from you. Ooh. And so what happens is the kids start doing this. And sure enough, the giants who live in the forest come and become their friends. Ooh. And, um, Into it. Yeah, but nobody believes them, of course. The adults are all like, you're crazy. There's not giants out there. What's wrong with you? But then something happens in the town where um, the, the dike breaks <laughs> And the town is flooding yeah. or some other kind of disaster that requires a giant's assistance. And the kids go get the giants and the di- giants save the day and put, you know, put their hands up on the wall so that the, the town is saved. Yeah. Um, it's called giant baiting. <laughs> this I reminds me. I made that dirty. I, I look, I, I looked it up because it reminds me of magic in the water. Oh, yeah. Did you watch that? No. As a kid? No, it was about okay. Nessie. Yeah, it's about Nessie. But also, Nessie eats Oreos. Anyways. Oh, well, yeah, that does seem similar. I watched it so much as a kid. There was a movie about called Trolls or something like that that was put out a couple of years ago. That was an indie film where they caught trolls in Norway or something. Oh, yeah. It was a not English language film, but it was pretty good. What's the Selkie one, like, from when we were kids? Oh, my gosh. I watched it recently. I can't remember. It was really it was like, good, though. It's, it's really good, but it's, like, really sad. If, yeah, the they're Secret, Secret of Ronan-ish. Ronan-ish. Yeah. Oh, I watched that one so much, too. It's really, really good. Oh, okay. So many good kids Selkie movies. Selkie is, like, a sick myth. It's one of my favorite myths. Yeah. Very I love cool. the Selks. Uh, okay. Especially that they're like, where's my coat, God damn it. Yeah, exactly. And once they find it, they're like, oh, man. Peace. Have you ever read, um, what is it? Crap, I'm not remembering it. I'll try and remember what it is. Okay. Uh, okay, so this one is like, it's told as though it is an old Norse myth. So that's like, that's like the um, time period or like, you know, general, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's the feel that it's had. That's a tone. Okay. Tone and time period of it. Um, and it's about, uh, it's about a woman who's, who's like, basically like, like tossed out of her, uh, you know, of her town when she's uh young because she's considered to be like way too fierce even for these like very warlike people they're just like you're fierce and you're out of control whoa and you won't like you won't listen to us so that's the biggest issue it's not that she's fierce but there's just like we even though that we're all warriors and we're all very tough we all still uh, you know adhere to this hierarchy and why are you not adhering to this hierarchy uh and so when she's like young she's like just thrown out and she's like you know what am I going to do to survive? And it turns out that there's a whole bunch of people like her. She's taken in by people like her who were also uh, oh. thrown out when they were very young, but a lot of them have grown up. So they formed like their own Sparta. band, essentially. Oh. Yeah, Sparta. Um, and at first, all of the people that she's with are sort of like, like very fierce and very warlike and very like, we're, we're only looking out for ourselves. We got thrown out. That's not cool. Uh, but she's like, hey, do you know what? There's like merit and there's like an outside threat, right? Like, so her village that she's originally from is under attack. And she's like, even though they threw me out, I still super care about them because yeah. at the end of the day, they're my family. You're also my family. We should take care of them. Because of course, all of these crazy, fierce people they are an exceptional warriors. Oh, of course. Um, so they're very good. And amongst themselves, they can have a hierarchy because it's sort of like they are also incredibly fierce that it's still sorted out. They'll listen to one another, even if they wouldn't listen to people in their original towns. Anyways, my point is they all eventually listen to her and they go back and they defend their original homes from these like invading forces. Um, and they're all welcomed back into their Aww. original families. But once a year, they still come together and meet and remember like, hey, we're also chosen family, even though we belong to our regular families. That's great. It's called Call of the Conclave. That's great. I'm watching it. That was very long. Was very I love it. Winded. This one is ridiculous. And what it is, is... <laughs> A, I'm already excited now. A young person is called on a mission because uh, she grew up with a hammer, a, ha- a magical hammer that could smash anything. Anything she touched with it just smashed. Um, she also spoke Spanish, but also English. And uh, the evil fish <laughs> uh-huh. in the town have uh-huh. grown the ability to breathe air. And they have set up a wall. I'm going to do a lot with walls today. Yeah. A wall around the town using their fishy faces so that people... Wow. They, and they can't fight them because the fish will just eat them if they go up to... Um, if they go up to him. So she's called upon with her smashy hammer to come in. She has to break through at least two fish heads. 
in order to break the wall. The film is called, <laughs> keep in mind, she speaks Spanish, Rec Dos Gil Gate. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> You're welcome. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> Smash two fish <laughs> Uh, here's a card that I didn't know was actually reprinted in this set. It's going to be pretty sick for whoever gets this. Um, okay, so this is like an alien invasion set in the future. In. Um, and all of these aliens invade, except they're they're exceptionally tiny. And the way they do it is by um, by infecting people. Um, and, you know, so it's, mm-hmm. it's not it's not as they possess them, but it's like they infect the population, the population dies off, they get the planet. Okay. Uh, and... So part of the torture of it is, though, because they're, you know, they're they're effed up. Yeah. Um, is that while the people are sick, they're completely unable to communicate, right? They're like, they're out. They're basically unconscious. Like, they're in a coma, yeah. essentially. Put there by the sickness. Um, but they can all see in their minds, like, while they're in this coma state, what it would take to treat the illness that they have. But obviously they can't communicate it. <gasps> and it's like it's like 100% lethal. So no one ever wakes up from the coma and is like, I've got it. I've got how to solve it. Because they just die of it. Uh, except for one person who obviously does wake up. Will Smith. Um, Will, oh, 100% is Will Smith. 100%. <laughs> it definitely is. Uh, and he has to go about convincing people because they don't believe him. He's like, I can see it. And they're like, that's like, that's why would that happen? Yeah. Um, and so he has to go about convincing people to create this treatment as he saw it when he was uh, infected. Oh, that's cool. It's called Serum Visions. Oh, love it. Oh, yeah. Also sick guard. Cool. Modern staple, you guys. I've, I've uh, found our rare. Ooh. I had a Chandra's Outrage, but I'm just going to put that down because that's yeah. just a... I put a couple down that were just uh, okay. like Orzov Signet, Core Hookmaster. So I just... Th- I just <laughs> Good thing I didn't get that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> really dodged a bullet there. Um, I got to think of a really good one for this one. Um, so I think the movie that this is based on is um, a film about s- a, uh, some kind of... It's basically Star Wars, except we're going to replace Yoda <laughs> with Goblin Guide. <laughs> Whoa! Awesome. Goblin Guide! What a good pull! Yeah! Sweet! Um, oh, let's see. There's also this foil Shimmering Grotto. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one takes place in the same one as your Rakdos. Um, the fish. No, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, but it is... No, it is. It's but it's about a person who who uh, like universe travels, right? It's like a, that's a parallel universe, and they travel into it, and they they're the whole time they're just walking around being like this, this cannot be true. Yeah. So when your heroine is like, "This is a Gilgate," they're like, "Is it Gilgate?" <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, all right, you guys. There, there's your uh, there's your flavor text theaters. What a show this week, yeah. Megan. Ooh, okay. Before we wrap up. Yeah. I also had to create a card for Vampire Bird Sanctuary. Okay, hit me. It is a legendary land. Comes into play. It does not tap for mana, but every time you cast a vampire, you make a 1-1 flyer. That's great. Yeah, there you go. Love it. The end. Uh, greatest designer search. Uh, call us. <laughs> Obviously, quality. <laughs> right up there with, you know, <laughs> milkshake. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Like we said at the top of the show, head over to patreon.com slash mtacast and become a member of our family, the Less Than 1% Club, or hit up cardkingdom.com slash mtacast for all of your singles needs and other magic ephemera. Cardkingdom.com slash mtacast. Thank you so much to everybody who's used our affiliate link. It really does make a difference, so thank you for that. Of course, you can find us on the internet at Twitter, uh, at mtacast on YouTube, slash mtacast. Facebook slash MTA cast. Yeah. Uh, if you're a patron, uh, hop on over into that Discord chat and yeah. let us know if you've got any for the noob questions. Yeah, we will we will do our best Happily to answer them. Talk about them. We've also got a store, magictheamateuring.com. You can buy a playmat, you can buy a t-shirt, you can buy magnets. You can buy these sick magnets. Yeah. They're great. Uh, well we've got uh, we've got more great magic talks coming up for you next That's week. That's right. So In your errors. In your ears. In your ears. And remember, Delilah's always listening. So if you have any love-related magic questions, 
send us an email, magicallyamateuring at gmail.com. Delilah. (laughs) 